many of you know, Mr. Jenkins, that four. Yeah. 
the First World War, most of the people who worked in these industries were people who came from Europe, immigrants. But then when the war started, something happened. What do you think happened that prevented them from coming across the water? Yeah, there was so much fighting, and at the time there were U-boats, submarines that would sink ships, and people just could not leave their countries. There were also restrictions, and people could not leave the country. So now, in order for someone to fill their places in these industries, who do you think came to uh, fill those jobs? No, no, this was during the time of the First World War. First World War started in 1914. Well, the immigrants were going to jobs. Now they couldn't come across some ship, sun oil, steel companies, the railroads. Any idea what people came to fill the jobs? Right. Yeah, don't get very excited. And most of the black people came from where? South. From the South. Working in what? Right. Many of the cotton fields are in other agricultural areas of the South. Now, what happened is that they came where? North. Many came went to big uh, industrial places like Pittsburgh, Philadelphia, Harrisburg. But then, enough came to a place called what? Some of these same people are your grandparents. Hmm? Yeah. Uncle and aunt who came here during the time of the First World War. Grandparents, great grandparents, you know, whatever the case might be. When you got to Chester, we got jobs in some of all, we got jobs in some ship on paper, on the railroad, or whatever. And this made a very big difference because a large number of people came. Now, where did most of the black people just live, do you think? Around what area? Any idea? What general area? Then in 1870, we had the organization. 
days in August. St. Daniel's United Methodist Church, at that time it was called St. Daniel's Methodist Episcopal Church. In 1871, we have Murphy A. Deming Church. We have then, a few years later, St. John's A-U-M-P Church. Are we familiar with some of these churches? We have St. Luke C-M-E Church. But then, in 1879, something interesting happened. Most of these churches were Methodist-type churches. But in 1879, another, a church of another denomination was built, and that was called... Any idea? Baptist. Now, what Baptist church was it? Calvary. At the time, it was called the First African Baptist Church. Later, the name was changed to Calvary. It was built by the Crozier family, the same family that was the Crozier Seminary, right where Crozier Chester Medical Center is located, right in that same area of the seminary. Uh, Crozier built the Calvary Baptist Church. That was the first black Baptist church in Chester. You will see some names and some pictures as you go into the historical society. Let me just briefly point out some as you look at them. You will see a picture, I believe, of Reverend Milton Sparks, who was one of the early pastors of the Calvary Baptist Church. You will see a picture of Reverend Thomas M. Thomas, who was the first pastor, the builder of the now Thomas M. Thomas Church, but it was then called, until just a few years ago, the fifth Presbyterian Church. Reverend Thomas came from South Carolina. He studied at Lincoln University and then he came to Chester and began to organize the 5th Presbyterian Church, the only black Presbyterian Church in Chester. You will also see pictures of several schools. Black schools. One was the Latin School, located around 2nd I'm sorry, around 4th and Edward Street, which they did a Watt School. None of you remember a school called Watt Street. Yeah. Hmm? Anybody in the room? I mean, any of you? It was by St. Daniel's. Very good. Okay. There was the Harrison School, which was located around 2nd and Townsend Street. And there was a school located right here in this area, just a couple of blocks, uh, this way I believe, around 17th and uh, Walnut Street, called the George Jones School. At a later period, there was a school called the McKay School, on 11th and Edward Street. These were just the only, at the time, schools for black people. The Washington School was not built, the Douglas School was not built, um, and at that time, we only went to school to do a black, black school, white, went to white school, until you got to the high school, for the most part. And then, when you got to the high school, it was the first time, for the most part, for any type of degree. At the high school, there were very, very few black people. And the reason I want to stress that is that today we are at the high school, are we not? And we have the leadership in the government, student government, class president, we have black principal at the school, but it did not come by way of just one day like this. In the past, where you are sitting here right now, there were, at one time, no black teachers in the high school. The students who came were only a small, in small numbers, and had little participation in what went on at Chester High School. I hope then that today, as you go back to the high school and to the middle school, that you begin then to hop into where you are, what you have, and the advantages of what you have. Let me say one other thing about the early Chester. In 1917, during the time of the First World War, there was a race riot in Chester. People died. People were hurt. People went through agony in order that today that we may be able to sit in comfort and we may be able to 
concerning the Great The Great Riot resulted in a lot of problems. The war ended in 1918, the First World War. Soldiers began to come home, and people began to organize their churches, they began to organize their clubs, they began to organize their institutions. Some of the clubs and institutions that were organized were called for the Post, American Legion Post, which is named after a young black man who was killed in the war in France. The group of Bennett homes, do any of you know where it is? Where? Did I say, do you know where the Rubel Bennett home is? Oh, I, I'm sorry, I don't mean the Rubel Bennett uh, home. I don't mean the home where people dwell. You mean the Fox Yeah, the uh, uh, Where's it located? Second and Second uh, and Rainy Street. Well, the Rubel Bennett home was organized by a lady, the same lady where the Rubel Bennett homes are located. Mrs. Rubel Bennett came to Chester with her husband, who was the pastor of the Calvary Baptist Church. She was an active person in the community, and she sought ways to help people in the community, primarily black people. And women came from the South, not having employment, not knowing where to go. And Mrs. Bennett helped many of these young women to find places to stay, helped them to find jobs. And what she did was to organize a group of women from various churches. And they, in 1918, bought the same house that is located at Second and Rainy Street, the large house. And at this, at this house, the women had to stay. They learned cooking, uh, sewing, how to wait on tables, things like that, so that they could have jobs. <coughs> Right here in this area, they work with people in this area, in Swarthmore, in Midyear, and places like that. But most of that was done through the emphasis of Mrs. Rubel Bennett. Mrs. Rubel Bennett also became the leader of the Negro Association of Negro Women's Club. She became the president of the state here in Pennsylvania. Uh, we have a lot of things going on, a lot of history. And Chester, is rich in talent. I want you to hear me. Chester is rich in talent. And Chester does not have to be dead. It does not have to be dead. Because we have to make it right here. But that's the need bright eyed people. Bright eyed people. And the difference between bright eyed and people who look at them and they are the difference between those who are just shucking and jotting. Nine o'clock on Monday morning until three or two. 30 on Monday afternoon until the same time at the end of the day on Friday. And those who make it, those who put something into it, are those who come out with bright eyes. And those who are going to make it, those who are going to make this place better.
Thank you.